I significantly lowered my risk of cardiovascular disease, and you can too. How did I do it? Let's get into it. Before we do, I'm Samir, and I'm a health coach and a PhD student. The changes we're going to discuss today are to lower your CVD risk, your cardiovascular disease risk. They're largely about changing diet and lifestyle. And those changes are really hard to do. In fact, they're so hard to do that most people who try fail. So if you're going to try and do what I've done, what I strongly recommend is that you find a support team. You can work with a health coach like myself who has reversed their own cardiovascular disease and who's helped their clients to do it as well. If you'd like to book a call with me, the link is below. Okay, so first of all, how do I actually know that I've lowered my risk of heart disease? Well, there are a couple of risk calculators that are used by the private sector. So this is one of them, and I'll put the link in the description below. This particular risk calculator is using data from the Framingham study in the US to calculate the 10-year risk of some kind of CVD event. And the CVD event that they've defined is either it's a heart attack <clears throat> or a stroke or death, right? Death by one of those two things, heart attack or stroke. So just to flag right off the bat, um, that one thing that we don't see in any of these risk calculators is LDL. You, very rarely, I, I, I don't think I've come across one that asks you to input the number for LDL, right? That said, it might be part of the calculation because there's other numbers here from which they can derive the LDL number, but it's not something they're asking for up front, and it's not as big of a risk factor as the things that we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, so what I have here is an estimation of my heart disease risk if I had listened to the experts who had told me basically to do what I'd been doing. So I should say that when my heart disease risk was high, what was I doing? I was vegetarian. Uh, I had been vegan for years. For part of that time, I was a smoker, which we'll get into too. But if I had listened to the health, ed, uh, health ed experts and just tried to you know, eat more vegetables, eat less and move more, this is the kind of risk that I'd be looking at. So the first thing I did to lower my risk of heart disease was to stop smoking. Uh, this is something I did many years ago. It's kind of an obvious thing to do. But if you are a smoker, by far the easiest thing you can do to lower your risk is to stop smoking. And we can see data that shows that population-wise. When heart disease pe peaked in the U.S., uh, it peaked around the same time as smoking peaked. So in other words, the number of smokers tracked very closely with the cases of cardiovascular disease, right? And as smoking rates have come down, deaths from heart disease have also come down. The second thing I did was to reverse my pre-diabetes and make sure that it didn't progress into diabetes. Now, diabetes is defined as having a hemoglobin A1C of 6.5 or above. Some places it's defined as 7 or above. My hemoglobin A1C never really got that high, but it was getting higher every time I got tested, right? And I think the highest was about 6.2 or 6.3. If I hadn't changed my diet, if I hadn't ignored my doctor's advice and done uh, pretty much exactly the opposite of what most people think is necessary to reverse heart disease, the chances are very high that I would be diabetic by now and my risk for heart disease would be through the roof. The third thing I did was to lower my blood pressure. So again, my BP was never really super high. I think it went up to about 140 or so, 140 over 80. Um, if I hadn't made the changes I made several years ago, I think it's reasonable to presume that my blood pressure would be around 160 or even 180. Um, over 100, right? So, uh, and, I, and I might even be on medication. Uh, and if we put that, then this is going to change a little bit more. But, but for now, let's just keep the medication off. The third thing I did was to raise my HDL number. Now, it's not exactly understood why higher HDL or high-density lipoprotein is a good thing. But looking at the population data, it's very clear that this is one of the best predictors, predictors of heart disease. So my HDL, when I was eating lots of vegetables, was kind of at the low end of normal and sometimes even low, right? Uh, and that's even when I was working out a lot. So I was doing a lot of exercise. Still, my HDL wasn't really going up. Usually the thinking is one of the things you can do to raise your HDL is to increase your exercise. And that's true to some extent. But many people who exercise still have low HDL because in my view, they're eating the wrong diet, right? So based on the, all that data, here is my estimated heart disease risk if I'd uh, not stopped smoking and if I'd listened to my doctor's advice. As you can see, I would have a huge risk, 43% of having some kind of stroke or heart attack or something like that in the next 10 years. Now, in fairness, my doctors were advising me to stop smoking. So if we change that, you see the risk comes down to about 25%. 25% is, is still one in four. That's still pretty bad odds as far as I'm concerned, right? This is probably what would have happened if I'd listened to my doctor's advice. I made a number of lifestyle changes um, against my doctor's advice. Um, the first being that I went on a low carb diet which is the easiest way to reverse any tendency towards diabetes that I've seen. Diabetes is not present. Um, my A1C now is down around about uh, five, so nowhere near the diabetic range. 
right? So, and, and the blood pressure has also come down. So my blood pressure last time we checked, which was just a few weeks ago, was 110 over 70, right? Um, A1C is down, as I said. Total cholesterol has gone up, so I'm no longer sort of near the normal range for cholesterol. My cholesterol was always at high normal as a vegetarian. Um, now my cholesterol is more like 300. And my HDL has gone up to about 60. And my triglycerides are also at about 60 right now. So that's generally what I like to see in clients. If your triglycerides and HDL are about the same, a one-to-one -one ratio, that's fantastic. Now, someone can look at this and say, look, with these numbers are fine. You've lowered your risk uh, down to 6%, and that's great. But if you lowered your LDL, the risk would go down even further. And that's, that's true, right? So if we put this, say, at 200 instead of 300, we see that the risk goes down significantly. So the total, from total cholesterol and HDL, you can kind of infer what the LDL numbers would be. And in fact, the LDL that's measured, it's not really a measurement of LDL. It's a calculation using these other things anyway, right? So that's fair enough, right? And, and I think that, um, you know, if you think LDL is, uh, is another risk factor, right? Um, then you can, you know, once you've already taken these measures and you've already lowered your risk significantly, then you can take other, you can do other things that will lower your risk even more. Um, but, you know, it's totally up to you. So if you want to go from a 6% risk to a 4% risk, then you start worrying about LDL. But if you want to go from a 30% risk <laughs> to a 6% risk, which in my view is far more important, uh, that's when you don't worry about LDL, you worry about all these other things. You worry about your, diabe your diabetes, you worry about lowering your blood pressure. Regardless of whether or not it's worth taking measures to reduce risks further, I've already reduced my risk according to the mainstream private sector risk calculator from about 25% to about 6%. That means I'm four times less likely to get a heart attack after changing my diet and after eating a lot of fat and saturated fat than I was before I changed my diet. Now, why do I say all this? What I see too often is that people equate their risk of heart disease with their cholesterol numbers, particularly the LDL, low density lipoprotein, which I've talked about in other videos. What I've just done now, this exercise that I've, I've just done with you, it illustrates very clearly that LDL is not the only thing to worry about. And in fact, there are much bigger priorities in terms of reducing your overall CVD risk, especially if you, you know, have high blood sugar uh, or if you're not insulin sensitive. Once you've done all that, once you are insulin sensitive, once you have high HDL and low triglycerides, then by all means, feel free to take measures to lower your LDL, either by taking a statin or you can take a supplement like berberin or something like that. But if you focus on LDL first, you're ignoring the big risk factors and focusing on the smaller ones. So with that, I'm Samir. I'm a health coach and a PhD student. Again, I urge you, if you're interested in making lifestyle changes to improve your health, to reduce your risk of CVD, cardiovascular disease, do give me a call. The link to book a call is below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.